What's up everybody, Nick with Velox Training Group and today we've got another 100 round range day. A lot of you guys were in the comments saying that you wanted a 100 round range day with the rifle and that is exactly what we're going to do today. Now, if you're new to the 100 round range day sessions, basically what we do is we take exactly 100 rounds and have a quick little training session with it. Throughout the day or throughout this session, what I try to explain to you guys is basically three different drills and throughout these three different drills, we're gonna be focusing on specific things. We're gonna focus on some dry fire aspects and we're gonna focus on some live fire aspects. And then when we're done, we'll give you guys some ways to go down, look at your target and try to diagnose what exactly is happening so you guys can make the most of your training. So let's get to it. The first drill that we're gonna do is doubles. We're gonna go ahead, use doubles as a way to explore the mount with the rifle. So. First, let's talk about what exactly we're looking for when we shoot doubles. Basically, what we're gonna do is look to a small spot on the target, look to where you want the bullets to go, right? You're going to press the trigger twice as fast as you possibly can. Now, some people might go, well, hey, that's, that's one sight picture, two trigger presses. No, we are looking the entire time and pressing the trigger twice as fast as you possibly can. It's not one sight picture, two trigger presses. Make sure you guys are looking the entire time. That will take care of the visual piece. Now, what we're after here is a couple things. So while you're shooting these doubles or pairs, whatever we want, whatever we want to call these, we're, we're looking at how is the rifle behaving while we're shooting these really fast pairs. In other words, do I feel the rifle coming out of my shoulder? Do I feel the pressures changing, the pressures that I'm putting into the rifle? Do I feel those changing? Am I putting some sort of unwanted input into the rifle? And I'll go over all this here in a second in more depth, but am I putting any sort of input into the rifle that is gonna make it behave in a very unpredictable way, right? When we look at the way that we mount the rifle, I think two principles should never ever be broken. And I think the first principle is the rifle has to behave in a very predictable manner. Meaning if I put the dot in the center of this piece of tape on this, uh, on this target and I press the trigger, the dot lifts, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm not terribly concerned with where the dot goes. What we should be very interested in is where does the dot come back down to? So in other words, if I press the trigger and it lifts and it comes back down over here, and then I have to physically move it back to this spot and then I press the trigger and then it comes back down over here and it's coming back down all over this target. There's not a way on God's green earth that we are gonna shoot this thing very predictably and fast at all. So by predictively, I mean we're shooting at a pace to where you can't react to the second sight picture, right? There's, there's no way for me to press the trigger twice at a 15 split and react to that 15 split. And that's kind of what I'm after here, right? And again, we're just using this to diagnose. So <clears throat> if we're talking about like predictive type of shooting, like what I'm after here is to just look at this one spot and make bullets go to that spot the entire time. And the only way to do that is if the rifle behaves very predictively, all right? The next thing that we need to be looking at, I think as a really good principle um, is being able to mount the rifle in such a way to where I can bang on the trigger for as fast and as long or as, or as long as I want or as I need to, right? Meaning the gun is not going to move based off of the type of inputs that I'm putting into it, right? The way that you mount the gun is going to be a very, very big deal. So basically what I think about with the mount is I put the stock relatively, uh, I'm not going to say low, but it's, it's more or less level with the top of my shoulder, maybe it's about an inch lower. What I don't want to see is this. I never want to see my stock above my shoulder, right? This is not, this is not conducive to making the rifle behave in a very predictable manner. So stock level or just a little bit lower than my shoulder. The next thing I'm going to do is on the beep, all I do is just lift this shoulder up and it brings the rifle up to my face. I'm not doing this down to the rifle. Don't forget, like, there's four points of contact on this thing. That means there are a lot more places on the rifle that you could put different types of inputs. The way that you cheek the gun matters a lot. Next thing we'll think about with the mount is I'm not pulling really hard with my firing hand. 
If I pull really hard on the rifle or on the pistol grip with my firing hand, I feel a lot of tension in this hand and I won't be able to have the dexterity to number one, run the trigger fast. And number two, I'll probably put some sort of input in, into the gun because I'll end up pressing the trigger with my entire hand. That's definitely uh, something that we want to avoid. Next thing that I do with the mount is something that I learned from Frank Proctor probably 10 years ago. And hopefully I get this right, Frank. Uh, basically grab the front of the rail and just let this elbow hang, right? When you do that, you will feel the rifle suck back into your shoulder. And what you will feel is you don't have to put a whole lot of effort into pulling the rifle back into your shoulder. And what you guys will see too, if you start pulling really hard with that support hand and really hard with this hand and putting a ton of effort into it, you will not be able to hold that amount of effort over a string of fire. So in other words, like you'll give it all you got and then maybe five, six rounds in, the hands start to loosen up a little bit and then you start putting different inputs on the gun and then the gun starts behaving unpredictably instead of predictably. So I'm gonna stop running my yap here and we will shoot some doubles. We're gonna shoot doubles all the way back to 50 yards. We're gonna end up uh, in the woods here, cameraman, when we're done. I like starting with doubles at 10 yards. And at 10 yards, this is the place where with a rifle, we need to be very, very critical of not only what the mountain is doing, but what our group looks like. At 10 yards with a rifle, my goal is to basically have no bigger than a three to four inch group. I think if it's bigger than that, if it's all over the alpha, you guys are probably putting some sort of input into the gun, probably a lot of input into the gun if it's all over the alpha at 10, all right? So let's go ahead and shoot it. Oh, I shoved on that last round. The last round went off to the left a little bit. That was that shoulder getting involved, All right? So we'll look at this group. Now, a lot of you guys might go, hey man, like that's, that's all in the alpha. That's, you know, basically the size of your fist. That's not a bad group. <laughs> that's not what we're after here, right? We're after way more than that. If we're paying attention to how the gun is behaving like we should be, or as much as we should be, that's never good enough. Like I wanna see this, right? So when we get done with doubles and we come down here to the target, what we're looking for is trends on the target. And if there's not really a trend on the target, which I would say there's not much of one here, are there bullets in places that you don't want them to be? And if so, did you see that happen? Okay, so the ones on the left for you righties, if you push with your shoulder, your cameraman stand right here, if you push with your right shoulder, you will see the gun track to the left. That's what's happening. So like you'll pull with your support hand, right? And then as soon as you go to push your second shot, this happens. That's when you will see bullets tracking to the left. All right, let's go back a little further. About 15 or so. All right, is that eight or 10? Cameraman, I think it was eight. eight. Okay. Much better, starting to settle into it a little bit, right? Not bad. All right, let's go back further. All right at about 20 yards. Okay, let's go down and take a look at the hits real quick. <clears throat> Definitely saw some high, high right. I would say for a righty, if you're seeing some high right, the dot is starting to catch your attention when it starts to lift. It definitely caught my attention on those. <clears throat> so we're paying this close of attention to this stuff so we can try to make a change. 25. Gonna be a reload in here after the first two, but that's all right.
All right, something really interesting happened there. We'll look at it after. But uh, after that reload, first shot right went right where I wanted it, and that right shoulder got involved and pushed the low left Charlie. <clears throat> About 35 yards. So in my experience, this is where people want to start shooting very, very reactively, meaning they want to see the dot every single time rather than sending predictive type of splits. So you'll see, like I will still send aggressive splits um, all the way out to 50 to 60 yards while shooting doubles. All right, here we go. All right, felt a little bit of tension there, which I feel like is normal, All right? If you guys are not feeling any sort of tension in your shooting, it's kind of like you probably should go a little bit faster. All right, so last set at 60 yards. So 60 is certainly a place where people do not want to shoot very fast. And I'll tell you guys that if you never explore how fast you can actually shoot things at this particular distance, you'll never know, right? That might sound like common sense, but I feel like a lot of times people go to the range and they stay inside of their comfort zone. You will never get better if you just stay inside of your comfort zone, right? <clears throat> That actually went pretty good. The last shot is kind of high right. That might be a high right delta. We'll take a look. So when you guys come down and you look at your target, you're not looking at the one or two here, or there, right? Like this one, like, yeah, that's not great, but like, that's not a trend. We want to look for trends. And so what I would recommend you guys do, instead of looking for the one or the two, look for the many. What do the many rounds look like? I think the goal of doubles, if you shoot it pretty well, right, and you aren't putting any sort of input into the gun, is as you get further back, you will see the group kind of expand like this, totally fine, right? As long as it's expanding concentric around the spot that you're looking. And what I felt there is definitely, like when I was back at 50 to 60 yards, the dot catching my attention a little bit and me trying to pull it back down with my support hand. Definitely not the way to go. Now, <clears throat> if you didn't feel any of that, right? Say you're the guy that you're like, man, I don't know how the hell that happened. I didn't feel it, I didn't see it. But this is your target. This should key you in on some things that are actually happening with your mount. And this should tell you like, all right, maybe I should pay more attention to what my support hand is doing. Is my support hand coming off of the gun? Do I have consistent pressures throughout the whole string of fire with all points of contact, things like that? Like this will give you a way to, you know, more or less not only diagnose, but give you a way to pay very close attention to what exactly your mount is doing. Let's move on to the next thing. Second drill that we're gonna do is target transitions. So things that we're gonna be looking at for this is how is the gun arriving on target number one and am I able to shoot it at the pace that I should be shooting it? Meaning, am I using the, the correct type of confirmation levels? Some things that will help you guys with getting the dot to land precisely on the spot that you're trying to hit. Number one, getting your eyes out in front of the gun. Meaning, when you look to a target, it's not just look at the target, it's look where you want the bullets to go. So like look to a very small place to place your dot on. That is how you're going to get the gun to stop on the target, okay? Next thing is don't shove the gun, right? Especially if your gun looks something like this with a suppressor, a flashlight, and a laser on it. This is a, a, a front heavy gun. If I shove this gun, it is not going to come to a complete stop. And if it does, it's going to be beyond the target. It's gonna pass the target. Then I'm gonna either have to make corrections or at the end of the day, just shoot crappy points. Neither of which are really good shooting. So like look to the spot that you want the gun to come to and just kind of let the gun come to what you're looking at, right? That's the visual piece of this. The next thing that we're gonna look to is confirmation levels. So when you have different size targets like what we have out here, we've got partials, we've got open targets, we've got small steel, 
Uh, that partial over there is significantly smaller than this partial right here. You can't shoot all of these at the same type of confirmation levels. And what I mean by confirmation levels is like, when you look to a target and you put the dot on the target, how much of the target is it covering up? If you put the dot in the target and it's swimming in a sea of brown, you could shoot that one way faster, right? If you put the dot on the target and you know it's kind of covering up a lot of the target, it's like, well, that target needs a little bit more attention in regards to how much the dot is moving around on that target. While we're doing this, we want to dry fire it first. When you guys dry fire it, this is going to show you quite a lot about how the gun is landing on the target. And if it's not landing on the target, if it's doing things like going by it, you might want to start looking at, am I shoving the gun around or are my eyes actually out in front of the gun picking places on those targets for the dot to land on? So the dry fire piece of this is almost more important than the live fire. Think about dry fire as like, hey, this is the homework, right? The live fire piece, that's the test. Definitely don't like how it streaked into this one. That was not good. Here we go. All right, let's go ahead and shoot it. So we'll shoot this twice. So that'll be a total of 10 rounds, which should leave us with cameraman. 16. Cameraman said I shot too many doubles, so my round count is a little off, so uh, apologize for that. All right, here we go. All right, I shot that open target like a biatch, not aggressive enough. What's up? You shot four targets at eight rounds. Eight rounds. I'm glad the cameraman does math really well. <laughs> Add one more target, you have 10. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's do it again. One more time. Here we go. Much more aggressive. The last thing that we're going to do is a movement drill. Now, a lot of the times when I set up movement stuff, it's not some sort of like standardized drill. And sometimes it is. A lot of the time it really isn't. I would just put up random targets, right? Throw some sticks out some random targets at different distances. Some of the things that we're looking for with movement, all right, we're gonna start here at this stick, shoot five, move up to that stick, shoot another five. I think some of the key things here is number one, how do we get out of this position, right? We don't wanna do things like stand up tall, shoot that five, and then have to like drop step to get out of that position, right? Every time you go to drop step, you are adding basically a second to a second and a half on top of your total time. It's not a good idea to do things like drop step. So what I would look for in my movement stuff, stand nice and wide, right? Feet wide, spread apart, knees bent. This is all good things. When we leave out of this position, I, all I'm going to do is just push forward like that. So it's almost like your shoulders are leading the way in terms of what is going first, right? It's, it should feel like someone is more or less like pushing you from behind. It should not look like, like this to get out of that position. You don't want to do things like drop step to get out of that position, things like that. You should just like lean and go forward just like that, right? Now, the entries, things that we're looking for with the entry. Obviously, like we want to enter in a position with the gun already up, right? So if I come running into here, I need the gun up before I get here. The last thing that you guys want to do is unmount the gun, run to a spot, then find your target, then bring the gun up, right? This is adding three to four seconds again on top of your total time that is just completely unnecessary, right? You will see those times go way down when you start getting the gun up. The next thing that I wanna look for is how are my feet landing, right? In other words, like, am I just running to a spot and like, like coming to a screeching halt? Am I crashing into that position? Or as I come to a, as I come to a halt, am I able to shoot immediately? And that's what I'm looking for. And the way to do that is to have the gun up with your feet landing really, really softly, right? So gun up and those last couple steps need to be very, very soft because that is what is going to start like quieting down what your dot is doing. Just like everything else, we'll dry fire this, right? We'll get, some, get a couple reps in, dry fire, 
see what it looks like, trying to assess like, hey, is the movement piece going well for me? Am I getting the gun up soon enough? Am I getting it up too late? Or am I getting it up too soon? Things like that. Um, how am I landing into that uh, position? And what does the dot look like on the target as I'm coming into that position? In other words, am I landing with my feet quiet enough, right? Okay. Another thing too, <clears throat> anytime you're not doing any sort of shooting, that's dead time, right? That's, that's costing you time. Get that over with quickly. It shouldn't be like, if there's a run from here to here, it shouldn't be like a meandering slow walk. All right. Dot looked like it was landing on the target pretty good. All right, do it again. Definitely not precise enough on that steel with my eyes. At least on the first shot. Last round I missed. This one, pretty boring again, like alpha is just basically stacked in the spot that I was looking. We've got two alpha, two Charlies up here. Um, this is the one that I was leaving on. So like for me personally, at least uh, the stuff that I've been paying attention to in the last couple weeks is trying to stack shots very precisely as I'm leaving a position because I know that is one of my weaknesses and this is pretty damn typical for me. So I know that these two alphas are probably my first shot. And then as I was leaving out of that position, this target really didn't have my attention anymore, which is why you're seeing Charlie's on that one. Um, <clears throat> steel. There are four alpha on this one. It's pretty boring. Uh, did not shoot that guy, shot this one. <clears throat> So another same, same exact thing, right? Two alpha, two Charlie. This is me like streaking the gun into the position and not waiting for, you know, the sight to be settled in the middle of the target, right? This is why we're out here working on this stuff. And if you've got a hundred rounds, again, this is the stuff that you should be paying attention to. What are the trends on the target? What types of things are you guys assessing while you're doing this? Um, while you're doing the dry fire bits of it, while you are doing the live fire piece of it, what things are you assessing? What things are you looking at, right? What things are you paying attention to? That's what I got for you guys today. If you guys have any questions on anything that we did in this video, as always, feel free to drop them in the comment box below. Always happy to answer them for you.